You have six to seven births. That's all you've got. If you held the trigger back in 15 seconds, you're empty. He said, Graves, think about it. What do they do with convicts before they execute them? They wanted to have that island for a place to land. When did you become a flamethrower? I was issued a flamethrower to begin with in the 5th Division because we were get, that's what we were going to train for. My job was, of course, to knock out pillboxes, fortifications, burn them out. What does a flamethrower carry in combat? F uh, five, five gallons of uh, fuel, fuel, oil, gasoline mixture, a lot of fire. No napalm. Napalm's a jelly and it throws chunks like that and burns. We didn't use that. The tanks used that. Okay. And they could shoot it way out. How far did your, did you carry a sidearm at all or? I carried a forty-five because I couldn't carry a rifle. Because that gun is about that long. Yeah? Yeah. What about how far, how much distance could you get with a flamethrower? How far would it go? Yeah. I would say with a straight shot, full force, you could probably, you'd probably get 65, 70 feet. Wow, right that's in there. A... Oh, yeah. But it wouldn't be as effective if you burst in the entrances, you know, because you're, you're going into an open cave. There's always an entrance, you know, and you blow fire in there. Just blow a couple of bursts like that. You have six to seven bursts. That's all you've got. If you held the trigger back in 15 seconds, you're empty. That's it? That quick. That quick. Wow. So, so you have to learn to swoosh, swoosh. That's it. You got about five or six like that. Five gallons gone. Yeah. Wow, how many? Two, two and a half in this tank, two and a half in that tank. The pressure tank was in the middle. Yeah. So there's three tanks? Yeah, well, it's three cylinders. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that middle one was reinforced steel. And the, the other tanks were close to it. The only thing that I would think of is if they shot me from the back and a round hit between the tanks, it would get right through in my back. But if it hit those, they were oval, so it would probably ricochet off. Interesting. <clears throat> Let's talk about the gourmet breakfasts, the morning of the invasion. <laughs> the gourmet breakfast. <laughs> we got up in the morning, and they had chow on top side. They brought it up. Because the amphibious tractors were down there. We had to live on that thing for two weeks. <laughs> on top, on a blanket, that was it. <laughs> and we had to leave the blankets there <laughs> when we got off. And all of a sudden, you know, there was, every now and then we'd see a Jap Zero in one of our planes fight overhead. We'd see that. And then the shells from, from, the, from the warship, the battleships and that, you could hear them, shoo, 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 like that, and then you'd, we'd watch where it would hit. Uh, well, anyway, they brought the chow up, and we had steak and eggs. I never had a steak in the Marine Corps. I had a lot of eggs, but not a steak. So we're standing there eating at makeshift tables, and I said to this kid next to me, I said, hey, buddy, I said, what's with the steak and eggs? He said, Graves, think about it. What do they do with convicts before they execute them? <laughs> That's the kind of humor we had going into battle. It's crazy. <laughs> but that's where we were <laughs> until we got in it. And it was reality. Yeah. And I'll never forget we passed by a transport and the navies were up on the bow waiting for us to go by, you know. And they'd have a cup of coffee and they'd say, Give it to them, they're a Marine. Give it to them, they were nice. Give me a cup. No, I go. <laughs> did, they, did they give you a mission brief before you went in? Give us what? A mission brief. 
Did they? Yes. Oh, yes. We had briefing. What did they tell you? They said, if you can take a prisoner, take him. We don't know a thing about this island. We know it's eight square miles. We have an estimate of 22,000 Japanese soldiers on it. 22,000? 22,000. Yes. How many Marines were going in? Uh, that would be 65,000. Th- three divisions. There's 20,000 in a division. Well, 20, 40, 60. So 60,000 Marines took yeah. 22,000 yes. Japanese in yep. Iwo Jima. Can you imagine on eight square miles? No. But you see, they, they fought underground, then came up, fired, and went back down underground. So well, they weren't actually fighting on, on top side, you know. Why did we want to invade Iwo Jima? Iwo Jima? Iwo Jima lie in the way, in, in the path of Saipan, our, B, our B-52, uh, yeah, B-52, uh, B-52 is that Bombers? Right? Yeah, 52 is with her. And, excuse me, B-29s. <laughs> the B-29s were there, and they went direct flights there to Tokyo, dropped their bombs, and had to get back to Saipan. The, the, the uh, Corsairs that from, uh, from, uh, our, from Saipan could not travel that far. They ran out of fuel. So they wanted to have that island for a place to land in case they were hit. And also, uh, the, uh, the uh, P-51 would meet them, take them there, and take them all the way back to Saipan. It traveled that far. Okay. The P-51s. So Roosevelt designed this. That was his idea. And I thought it was a good, it was a costly thing, but when it was all over, we saved 29,000 Air Force personnel in some of our planes. Wow. What was the, what was the mission brief when they told you? Uh, what, did they, what did they tell us? What did they tell well, you? Uh, number one, if you can take a prisoner, take him. If you can't, you kill him. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.